another Friday and I've come your way once again with another edition of Bistec on Ghana Web TV. I am Enesina Sewa Asante. Now, for those of you who want to learn local dialects on the internet, there is a good news for you. An app has been created by Dr. Paul Azunri, who is the founder of Natural Language Processing Ghana. And on today's edition of Bistec, he shows us how to make use of the app. My colleague, Mauli Aholumega, has more. For those looking to learn a local dialect or understand the language of other cultures, a team has created a unique innovation that will help you achieve this goal all through an app. On this week's edition of Biztech, I'll be speaking with the founder of this innovation, the Kaya app, to learn more. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. My name is Maoli Aholimega. Welcome back from that break on Biztech. My guest is Paul Azunri, and he's a founder for the Ghana Natural Learning Processes. Yes, Paul is my guest on this week's edition. Paul, welcome to Biztech. Thank good you for having me. How are you? Pretty good. Great. Many thanks for your time. Yeah, so just briefly tell us who, you, who Paul Azunri is and your role in the Ghana Natural Learning Processes. Okay. I, am, uh, I like to think of myself as a computer scientist mm -hmm. and an applied mathematician. Wow. So uh, <laughs> I look for ways to use these uh, ideas to actually improve human life. And in the context of Ghana natural language processing, mm. it's uh, a way of enabling technology to understand our local languages, mm. which currently doesn't exist until we started working on this. Okay. Yeah, Paul, so I want to find out from you, what's your educational background like and for you to move from there? Is there? Has there been any correlation to your educational background and the app that you're creating? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> absolutely. I've learned a lot in my schooling that mm. has taught me uh, a lot about what I'm doing now. Mm. So I went to Apokwari School uh, in Kumasi. Okay. Actually, in 2002, we did the National Science and Math Quiz and we won. So that was like uh, an experience that taught me I could do one, wonderful things if I put my <laughs> mind to it. Yeah. After that, I went to Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania and then for my first degree and then ended up at MIT with, uh, for my PhD. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're very, very well educated. <laughs> Some would say too much. <laughs> yeah. no, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think learning has an end. So It's yeah. a lifetime process. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure before you develop this app um, that we're going to talk about shortly, which is the Kaya app, right? Um, did you have to do some survey to sort of understand, has there been a deficit in the language barrier for people? Yeah, well, in, in this case, it was very easy to mm -hmm. do that survey. <laughs> All you had to do was open Google Translate wow. and look for Chi or Ga or Airway or any of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we started doing this about two years ago, mm -hmm. and you couldn't see any of these languages represented, mm -hmm. right? And even for the languages that were represented, like Yoruba, Swahili, which are very big African languages, we often hear from n native speakers that it's not good enough. Mm. And I think part of the problem with that is because the people working on it so far have not really been Africans. Mm. So it's kind of been solved from a distance away. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what, what actually went into the whole, you know, developing process? Because I know it, it has to take a lot of teamwork and, you know, research and all, all that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ghana Natural Language Processing mm. is a group which has more than 100 members. Mm. And we started with volunteer effort. Mm. So they would uh, spend time to help us create data mm. and uh, write software and so on and test various software frameworks to see mm. uh, whether the staff was good enough for it. Mm. Uh, so, yes, it takes a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. It takes a team. It's definitely not just me alone working on this. It's a big team it's of big team. linguists. So I'm a computer scientist. Yeah. This is a language problem. Okay. So you really need linguists. You have to find somebody who's yeah. specific in that area. People know each language very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Okay. Yeah, so I want to come to the artificial intelligence bit. Did you, and uh, machine learning, 
as, as an engineer yourself, did you have to, um, was this like when you were infusing, you know, the languages in there, did you, did you go through any challenges? Oh, absolutely. Mm. The biggest challenge is the lack of data. Mm. So for languages like Chinese, for instance, you have so many news in Chinese uh, and so on. For Chi, Ewe, and the other languages, that isn't the case. So mm. that's really the biggest issue because the algorithms that we use nowadays uh, typically are very data hungry. Mm. It isn't an issue for most big languages because there are so many, there's so much data. The internet is here, right? Mm. Our phones. But for our languages, we didn't even have keyboards for a while. Mm. So we were not even writing it correctly on the internet. So you couldn't really learn from uh, any, the data that was available. Mm. And the data that was available is actually religious. Mm. So like translation of the Bible and that sort of thing. And that brings its own challenges because the model you build on that is going to be biased mm -hmm. and you have to really control for that. Otherwise, your system won't be very good. Mm. But many people ask, uh, Google is already there. Why would you want to? Has, Google has its own translator. Why would you want to create one? I know obviously you are Ghanaian as well, so you'd want to have the Ghanaian representation and people learning other cultures mm -hmm. and all of that. But was it in a way to compete with Google? Uh, I mean, <laughs> as you pointed out, you can't really compete with Google. Exactly. But I feel like there's space for multiple companies here. Mm. So definitely when we started, Google didn't have any of this. Mm. So we were the first to uh, it. the first group in the world. Our app is the first app in the world that wow. had three hours. We didn't know when Google was going to get to it. They just got to it right now. Wow. And even when they got to it, we compared it and our stuff was better. Right. So making sure that we Ghanaians take control of the problem, mm. that we drive where it goes to, ensures that at any given point in time, you know, our solution is world class and we are not waiting for someone else. Mm. You know. Very, very great points. And I've been having a very interesting conversation. Now I want to zoom in into the app in itself. What's the one key feature for you on the app? <laughs> well, um, very key aspect is the speech recognition, mm. which means you can speak to the app and mm. it, tra it will transcribe the, what you're saying mm. into text in your local language. Okay. This is, to date, this, our app is the only app in the world that provides that. So mm. that's why I'm highlighting it. But there are a lot of new features that we are going to add that will mm. be very important. Okay. So obviously, allowing the thing to understand your speech enables, say, disabled people, people who can't see, interact with technology. Then there's going to be uh, speech to text, uh, mm. text to speech, text where to speech. now it generates, the robot generates the speech for you. Speech so for if you. you don't have voice, you can communicate. So you can imagine somebody who has not been able to communicate for decades now is given this tool mm. that enables them to do that. Uh, mm. That I think is what well. right. really right. changes, changes lives. Yeah. I've been having a very interesting conversation with you, so I'll just take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, there you have it. I've been speaking with Paul Azuri, and he's the founder for the Ghana Natural Learning Processing, which is an open source-based platform which is helping people to learn different languages, specifically Ghanaian local dialect. I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome off on that break. I've been speaking with Paul Azuri, and he's the founder for the Ghana Natural Language Processing, which is a, an, an innovation that has been created to help people understand their local dialect. Paul, I've been having a very interesting conversation with you. Still on the app, um, I want to find out, it, what, what's the target market for this app? Is it for schools? Is it for adults? Is it for people in the diaspora? Because, you know, we've had the year of return, a lot of people having to come back home to their roots, mm. having to learn different cultures and all that. That definitely is a big part of it. Mm. So all the ones you mentioned are part of the <laughs> target market. Okay. So first of all, we, we think introducing an app like this ensures that we Ghanaians have a way to learn our language and use it correctly, mm. uh, which is very important. So people in school can just, uh, they, you know, they can look up a word, maybe an English word mm. they don't understand, get the tree translation and say, oh, so that's what that, that's English what it word means, means yeah. and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? So definitely the schools, definitely the diaspora. That one, you know, you you target it because usually they have more money to spend, uh, so they'll <laughs> yeah, pay, and they're very appreciative of yeah, it. Yeah. So we definitely target them. A big part of what we are trying to do is to 
make this app uh, support itself mm. because the big component of it is funded. Mm. And you know, in other countries, uh, the governments dedicate a portion of GDP to, yeah, to research and stuff. Yeah, we, we don't have that here. Mm. So we have to find a way to pay for it uh, itself, mm. right, organically. And so in that, we are targeting companies. Mm. So startups or other businesses in Ghana who may need the solution. So mm. for instance, a lot of people have uh, WhatsApp messages in a local dialect. Mm. Maybe they're getting a lot of them. There's no way to process it right now. Mm. Our app, we are going to provide an API. So the app is like the front end the user can use. Okay. But we also provide an API where mm. you know it pays very little money to support the research. Okay. And then it processes the data for you, okay. it converts it to text. You can do your machine learning, analysis, regression, whatever you want on that. Wow. And automate that and to make it and it's going to enable a lot of things that were not possible before. Mm. So. And this is all done in your preferred language. Yes. Wow. So you pick, you pick, we, uh, right now we have five languages in there. Mm. We plan to cover the entire map of Ghana. Wow. So all the, whatever. All the, all the dialects in Ghana. All the, all of them. Wow. We'll keep going as, as long as. <laughs> then you have to find a lot of uh, language experts to, oh, absolutely. to help you out. Think about it. Language is culture. Yeah. Right. And in the future, our, probably our entire existence is going to be digital. And if That's our true. language have not been digitized, what's going to happen to it? Yeah, I mean, it will disappear. Yeah, yeah. So good. we have to make sure that we preserve it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Paul, just still, still on the app. Um, I know obviously creating apps comes with its own security and features and all of that. How secure is this app for people, for users out there? Uh, it as secure as we can get it. I think it's as secure as any uh, solution out there. Mm. Uh, so for instance, we do things like. We don't just store all the data that we get. Mm. We make a judgment call. Mm. We don't store any voice data because okay. it's too personal. Mm. Uh, the only data that we store is the data that you choose to share with us. Mm. So through the app, you can, if you run across a translation that's bad, mm. you can make a suggestion. Oh, okay. If you want, right? So if you choose to give us the suggestion, that's the only data we keep. Mm. We don't keep anything else mm. uh, because we know there can be there are a lot of uh, security issues yeah, yeah. with that. Yeah. And I mean, there are actually, beyond security issues, there are also ethical concerns. Exactly. You know, gender bias and other sorts of things mm. you have to think about. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so just finally, we're wrapping up. Um, I know you've been operating for two years now, right, on the app. How, how's the feedback like? I encourage you to go to the Android page <laughs> and look at the feedback. Uh, yeah. Surprisingly, very good. Okay. So in the, in, initially, people... We, there were some negative comments, or maybe it's not which, good enough. Which is normal. I mean, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't perfect, right? So mm. they looked up something, they didn't think it was correct. Mm. So, But over time, or sometimes people come in there and they don't find their language, mm. which also upsets them. So yeah. they give us a negative review, which we understand, right? But uh, nowadays, it's pretty much five out of five. Great. Yeah. But you're looking to add some, do some updates on it, right? Yeah, absolutely. We are mm. constantly doing updates. Mm. Not sometimes even you won't even see. We do them in the back end. Yeah, like yeah. we improve the. You just wake up in the morning and there's an update. And it's just better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. That's great. I, I really, I'm really enthused with what you guys are doing, and I'm really hoping you guys would go far with this because I think language and culture go hand in hand, and they're very, very essential to us. And for you to create an app, and you and your team creating an app too help assist this is, is, is a very good thing so we really appreciate what you do and uh, just your final words okay I think uh, the future is very bright mm. if we uh, understand it and prepare for it so I think as a society we should start prioritizing innovation entrepreneurship and in importantly incentivizing that mm. and out-of-the-box thinking for our youth because they are the future and they are the most valuable resource we have. Human capital is the most valuable resource we have. If we encourage them and then we uh, make role models out of projects like this mm. and we also you know, impart technological knowledge as we work on this to others, I think we have a very uh, good chance of making a huge impact in the next millennium. Great. So I've been speaking with Paul Azuri, the founder for the Ghana Natural Language Processing. We've been talking about the Akaya app which is an app that has been infused with some local dialects to help bridge cultures and learn about languages. Paul is also a graduate from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Yes, a very novel school at that. And he's been my guest on this week's edition of This Tech. Many thanks for watching. My name is Maulia Holmeka. Thank you, Maulia.
Aholu Mega for that report. Up next is Biz Headlines. <music> To our very first story, piloting of the ECD has begun in Seshi Asafo in the Western North region. This is according to the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison. He noted that this is to test the viability of an offline version of the central bank's digital currency in a community where there is no connectivity. He made this disclosure at the Ghana CEO Summit on Monday, May 30th. Mr. Chairman, in line with the rapid innovation in digital and financial services, the bank adopted the regulatory and innovation sandbox approach to support the process. Currently, the sandbox provides live tests of innovative digital financial services products, business models, and supportive technologies in a controlled environment for possible market rollout. More recently, the bank took a major step to explore a central bank digital currency within the framework of the financial sector digitization program. In partnership with GND Technology, the bank is currently piloting the East ones of the digital currency. This project presents a unique opportunity to design a technological representation of a fiat currency that will drive financial sector digitization further and also facilitate the government's inclusive digital transformation program. In keeping with the bank's commitment to digitization of the sector, the ECD project is progressing steadily. Since financial inclusion is one of the objectives, the bank has deemed it necessary to test an offline version of the ECD that can be used for consecutive payments between individuals and merchants where there is no connectivity infrastructure, just like cash. Digitizing the offline transactions of rural and frontier households holds the key to creating the necessary market linkages that could result in access to finance. So far, the usage and uptake of the offline version of the ECD is being piloted in a small town called Seshi Asafu in the Western North region. Selected users in that community have been using the ECD for daily purchases such as food, grocery, and drinks. The bank will continue to work with these users to obtain the critical usage data that will inform the decision about the ECD's future after the pilot. These are clearly landmark events in providing digital leadership with the payment systems to lead to a digitized economy in the near future. A report by Imani Africa has ranked the finance ministry as the most financially reckless ministry in the country. According to a report dubbed 2022 Fiscal Recklessness Index, the ministry has recorded over 11 billion cities in losses to the state due to acts of omission and commission by its officials. The losses are said to have been recorded between 2015 and 2020, and the calculations were based on irregularities tracked in the Auditor General's report for the said years. We looked at the financial irregularities or the financial cost of the indiscipline of public institutions or ministries, departments and agencies in Ghana. And over the period between 2015 and 2020, the irregularities of public institutions, that is ministries, departments and agencies, is about 13.9 billion Ghana cities. And if you compare that with the period between 2010 and 2014, the irregularities in this period or between 2015 and 2020 has increased more than 13 times, which means that the public financial management reforms that we have implemented are not delivering optimal results to the country. Now, if you critically go into the 13.9 billion, tax irregularities alone was about 9.2 billion, that is over 65 percent of the total irregularities recorded. Again, cash irregularities was the next highest irregularity, about 21 percent, or that's um, approximately 2.9 billion. 
averagely in the last six years, that is between 2015 and 2020, the average financial cost of irregularity is about 2.3 billion. And that is higher than how much we spent during the COVID-19 pandemic or the additional healthcare spending. Then again, if you compare the tax irregularities alone to the amount we've spent on free senior high schools, that is 7.7 .7 billion, the tax irregularities recorded in the last six years, 2015 to 2020, is higher than how much we've spent on a critical social um, service or social intervention program like free senior high school program. Now, if you look, go into the ranking, the Ministry of Finance and its subsidiary agencies are the most fiscally reckless institution, followed by the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Roads and Highways, Employment and Foreign Affairs. Generally, most of the public institutions are moderately fiscally reckless, which means that if you're able to tighten the internal controls and public financial management measures in the country, we will be able to address the cause of the recklessness, which are mainly driven by lack of compliance enforcement, and weak internal audit control system, and lack of application of sanctions. So when people abuse the laws, nobody is actually applying the sanctions. So these are the main causes of the irregularities. And if you look at now, between 20 15 and 2020, the top five fiscally reckless institutions as Ministry of Finance and its agencies, Ministry of Health, the Ministry of um, Roads and Highways, Employment and Foreign Affairs. Yeah. Ghana has been categorized as having a higher chance of defaulting on its external debt in the next five years, the CFR Sovereign Risk Tracker has said. Results from the tracker showed Ghana scored a mark of 10, indicating that the country has a 50% or higher chance of defaulting on its external debt in the next five years. The CFR Sovereign Risk Tracker placed Ghana among 10 other countries, including Egypt, Tunisia, Lebanon, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Russia, Ukraine, and Venezuela. Among the countries, the tracker showed Egypt as a nation with the slightly below 50% chance of defaulting in its sovereign loans. Touching further on Ghana, the CFR Sovereign Risk Tracker showed Ghana's short-term debt and current account situation is equivalent to 79% of its reserves. The Office of the Special Prosecutor has frozen all assets belonging to the late Sir John. The move comes after the OSP announced it has commenced investigations into the leaked will of the Forestry Commission boss we showed portions of the Achimota forest land bequeathed to some named persons. Details of the will have sparked controversy among a cross-section of the public with the Ministry of Land stating that the Lands Commission does not have any documentation to prove that the late Kwejo Owusu Freeye, otherwise known as Sir John, owned portions of the Achimota forest lands. In a statement issued on May 24th, the Lands Minister Samuel Abu Jinapur directed that the lands declared as owned by the late Forestry Commission boss is deemed as void. To our final story, the Institute of Energy Security is projecting a rise in the price of gasoline ranging from 5% to 9% over the current price it, with some form of stability in the prices of gas oil and liquefied petroleum gas beginning June 2022. The 5.49 and 4.13 percentage drops in the price of gas oil and LPG respectively on the international market, according to the IES, may not necessarily lead to a reduction at local retail outlets, as most marketers will look to maintain their prices to offset the losses from the depreciation of the local currency. Thank you very much for joining us on today's edition of Best Tech. This show airs every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Do well to log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Follow us on all social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Ghana Web. On YouTube, Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Do have a lovely weekend.